Yes, people, what is going on? Welcome back to the Yes People podcast, episode two of this new wave that we've got going on. Just me today, we're going to be talking through all things sport. There's a, few, a fair few things that have happened. In in a week where there hasn't actually been that much sport, I mean, there's obviously been a lot of football, end of the Bundesliga, the Premier League's back in full flow. There is a fair bit to talk about in terms of football, but actually, as overall, there's a hell of a lot more to talk about in sport. Now, I'm just going to cover a few things very, very quickly. Obviously, as we know Djokovic got coronavirus, so I did a video on that on this channel, reporting about that and of course it's obviously not good news it really does put a lot of sports in kind of jeopardy though because obviously there's a lot of people coming from all over the world going into these kind of tournaments and then all of a sudden you have let's be honest in tennis it's a two-player game one person at each end you can play doubles they weren't and then what probably umpire a couple of line judges and maybe one or two people collecting balls um it, it's not it's not exactly the most multi-person sport there is ever and if they're having problems with the coronavirus in tennis then it's going to throw up alarm bells for anyone that's coming to play i know the premier league they obviously have done very well with players all over the world going back to the premier league and starting up but other sports you think could struggle definitely could struggle uh, and one of them is definitely going to be the nba uh, which of course is going to uh, well hoping to start up very very soon major league baseball has already turned around and said that they're going to be impacted by it and they're not necessarily going to play all the games that they're meant to uh, which is probably for the best actually because baseball's the been dying for so so long they do need to change something up and if they play less games maybe they get more interest in it i don't know maybe it could maybe something go in your favor that way i'm not too sure but all i know is that the coronavirus is still having a massive massive effect the f1 also re uh, returns uh this friday i think it is in austria for the start of well, there for their uh, test lap qualifying lap and of course in the race uh which will be very interesting i know formula one have been very we, we, They've been trying very much to be at the forefront of the uh, of the coronavirus kind of pandemic and wanting to kind of be the uh, the leaders in terms of technology and stuff to help. Um, I know they did a lot of stuff with ventilators when I know there was a lot of breathing problems going on with the virus um, when it was kind of first starting off and was really at its peak. Uh, I know they were heavily, heavily involved in the development and the engineering behind actually getting those kind of things working, uh, which is very good. And I, and I do want to give credit where it is due to uh, everyone that works at F1, uh, ev well, everyone that works at an F1 team. And F1 is a sport as well. They have done very well, I must be honest. But I know they've cancelled multiple races. My favourite race in Baku, uh, that's been cancelled. Uh, and there's a few others as well from countries that have still got cases of coronavirus that are big no-nos in terms of going there but again there's a lot of people who got to be shipped all over the world for that um there's a lot of people that have tra got to travel a long long way it's not as if they can you know do five races in one country and then the following week go and do or the following month go and do five races in another country that kind of stuff doesn't work unfortunately um so they do have to go and be very careful with what they do uh, the season is of course going to be shortened it still looks like hamilton's going to be the favorite but again with the coronavirus you don't actually know what's going to be the case uh it could be the year to bet on a rank outsider if i was a better man that was probably what be what i would do maybe not a rank outsider i i, I probably put but to be fair i probably would put money on a rank outsider finishing in the top 10 top five maybe um but to win it i still think it's going to be one of the bigger names that you would know um but again as i said previously they've been very on it in terms of uh They've been very, very on it in terms of development and uh, engineering behind dealing with the coronavirus. So they should, should all be all right. But again, we'll have to see and wait what happens. Um, anyway, getting into today's video, what we're going to be talking about massively. There's some really good topics. We're going to be talking NFL. There's been some big news overnight in the NFL. Uh, we're also going to be talking very briefly about NBA. There's still football stuff as well, which is very interesting, of course. Uh, and that's where we're going to start, which is brilliant uh if you're not a fan of football you can feel free to skip over this little bit and then join us on the other side for some nba uh some nfl uh yeah there's loads of different stuff coming up but anyway let's just get straight into the football of course you've had the bundesliga has finished now by munich champions obviously uh my personal favorite story is Werder bremen managed to somehow survive uh they go into a playoff game against i actually can't remember who it was now i should really have looked this up uh, but they go into a playoff game anyway and uh, the idea is that if anyone doesn't know german football the team that finishes third bottom of the bundesliga finishes the team that faces third top of the uh, Bundesliga 2 and they have a playoff and the winner of the playoff goes into the Bundesliga the loser goes into the Bundesliga 2 that's how Union Berlin came up last year usually what happens is a team from the Bundesliga beats a team from the Bundesliga 2 um, but it is over two legs you do have to play home and away so normally it can have much more of an effect but this year I don't think it's going to have as much obviously because there's going to be no fans there uh, if you've got to go to a small stadium that's got a very good fan base you're starting to ask questions oh are we going to be able to do it are the fans going to be on side where now the fact that you've got 
nothing really to deal with. You've just got a game. I think the quality is going to prevail. So it's a very good result for them, uh, Werder Bremen, to uh, thump. I can't remember who they thumped, actually, now on the last day. They won 6-1 either way and uh, survived. But Paderborn have gone down. Dusseldorf have gone down, which are the two worst teams I've seen play definitely since the restart, unfortunately. Um, never nice to see anyone get relegated, but they probably are the two that deserve to go down. But Werder, Werder Bremen have survived so far, and it looks very likely that they're going to survive the whole way throughout, which is great news, obviously. Um, so, yeah, that obviously finished. Britain, Mitch and Gladbach have made it off a Champions League spot. It means that Kai Havertz looks like he could be on the move as they didn't qualify. Uh, Bayer Leverkusen didn't qualify for the Champions League, uh, which is a very, very big deal. I think a lot of people go, oh, yeah, but European football. The gap between Europa League and the Champions League is so great that it, you, cannot, it, you cannot avoid it. It is, it's simply unavoidable. With everything that's going on, with the transfer markets and obviously with the virus that we do have to consider and we do have to talk about, Kai Havertz, the money that he could bring in and the money that people have been willing to pay for him means that they could still be able to survive as a club. Very simply, and maybe this is a bit brutal and a bit harsh to say, but Kai Havertz stays at Bayer Leverkusen and they keep a £70 million asset who doesn't actually play as well as uh, they want him to, all of a sudden his value goes down and the club turns into some sort of trouble. They then let him go for £40 million and they think, oh, we could have had another £30 million, that would have been fine. Uh, but if, again, if you get if you let him go, and then you can pay for probably three more players, maybe even four more players at a decent level to then still try and get you going and competing, because it was large chunks of season. As much as I do like Kai Havertz, I still don't think he's a finished product, but there is a large amount of times this season where where he has been the man. He has been the guy that they have had to have gone to to score goals. And uh, for a 20-year-old, I think he is, 2021, 20, that's a big responsibility. So uh, if you can get a few more experienced players in, they'll be very, very happy with that. Um, but yeah, Borussia Mönchengladbach made the Champions League by Leverkusen didn't. Leipzig, obviously Timo Werner's played his last game coming to my Blue Boys, Chelsea, uh, which is fantastic. But the Bundesliga as a whole come to a... A pretty standard end. Uh, Borussia Dortmund lost on the last day. They got thumped, uh, which was quite funny, unless you were like me, who had an accumulator involving Borussia Dortmund winning. Thanks for that one. Uh, every other result, bar one, came in as well. So I'd probably had a decent cash out. But there we are. We, we move on. We move on. It was, uh, it's been a very decent end, shall we say, to the Bundesliga. There's a lot of time now for Bundesliga clubs to get ready for the Champions League. I think all their games are done. I don't think there's any other cup games or anything they've got to deal with. Um, but either way... Football in Germany is pretty much done with, bar the uh, playoff game that you've got to deal with, uh, I think, is it next week? It might even be this week, I'm not too sure. Anyway, German football is done. Now let's move on to Iron Robin. Fantastic bit of news for the Dutch forward that he has signed a one-year deal with Groningen. He, has ret he retired last year after an absolutely glittering career. Chelsea, uh, Chelsea, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, winning trophies at all of them, being a fantastic player at all of them, ripping it apart, absolutely genius footballer left foot is absolutely unplayable he signed a deal with Groningen coming out of retirement Groningen is the club that he started off his career at which uh, many people don't actually know he is a fantastic footballer he is a very nice guy he's a very humble guy and he's taken a team friendly deal to go and play which is fantastic but there was something really interesting about the deal which I think a lot of people may have missed um, where I know there was talks going on before about Groningen and Robin just after he retired so a year ago Groningen wanted to get him back he wanted they wanted to get the help from him um, because he is, again, a supremely talented player and he would shine in the area of uh, Again, he is slightly older, but the talent that he has would definitely come through. Even if he only played 60 minutes of a game, if you put your team 2-0 up, then you've done your job. Even if you put on 1-0 up, you've done your job. Um, so it, it, it's, it's an incredibly good deal, but... Quite brilliantly, what Groningen did is they kind of said, look, we want you to come back. We want you to come and play for us because obviously we're trying to build something here. We're trying to do this, all the jargon that goes on. And it never kind of came through. But of course, with everything that's been going on and the virus and all that stuff, I think Robin maybe thought that he might be a bit more involved with football than he actually was, uh, which is completely understandable. Again, the virus comes around and changes everything. That happens. That is, that's the world that we live in, unfortunately. But what they did do, which was really quite brilliant, was they actually made a montage for him, which was kind of linked up with clips from Michael Jordan's last dance. Uh, so obviously when Michael Jordan came back, uh, there was a big, huge thing. And of course, you had the I'm back um, press release, which is very cool, obviously. Michael Jordan comes back into the NBA, rips it up. Brilliant. But what they actually did was they kind of did, I think there's a huge motivational montage speech that goes on. Um, and then they 
pretty much just edited little clips of Robin in, which is fantastic when he was at uh, Chelsea, at Real Madrid, at Bayern Munich, when he was at Groningen and whatever, and um, when he played for the Dutch, natural, uh, Dutch national team. There we are. It was a very cool idea, a very cool concept, and it's, it's a very nice story that this small little club can do something that's so, so small and just go, look, this is what you've done throughout your whole career. We need this because we may be not scoring goals or whatever. It's something that takes probably two hours, three hours maybe to piece together, um, maybe my uh, slightly longer but again it would it's appreciated by Robin which I very much do like um what do I think it's going to mean for them in the league I mean I do still think they're a mid-table side um again they every now and again I do see them right down the bottom near the uh, relegation zone so uh, I don't really know what it's going to mean. They're going to be more competitive, of course. And, you know, I remember I went to go and see Van Persie play uh, for Feyenoord against Emmen, I think it was. He scored a hat-trick. He was the best player on the pitch by a mile, uh, which is great, obviously, because... Uh, he is a legend. He is a he is a Dutch footballing legend. Same thing as Robin. He is a Dutch footballing legend. Is he going to be able to inspire the team, you know, to come out and play the best way they can? And is he going to completely change the mindset? I don't know that for a fact, but I do know that they are going to be more competitive. And I think that's what you need to kind of do. And look, if you can sign a player of that quality on a team-friendly deal for, for even a year, and a guy that brings that much... Uh, professionalism and quality and the experience and the know-how that you would not be able to get anywhere else. It's a great bit of business. So uh, it's not a massive story to talk about, but it's one I'm very, very happy about. Uh, I am Robin returning to Groningen. I actually looked to see if I can get a Groningen shirt. And quite weirdly, I don't know if this is uh, just a promotional thing or not, but I looked and you can get Robin 10 shirts, which look very cool to be fair. But if you actually look at it, I was expecting to see the green and white stripes, a bit of advertising because there always is on these kits, and then Robin 10 or 10 Robin, depending on which way they do it. And actually, weirdly, they just had number 10. And then I looked at another photo shoot, which I'll put in here, which they just had Robin written underneath the badge. I don't know if that's how they do all their kits, but it's uh, very weird. So I won't be spending 60 quid on that one. But uh, yeah, it was, uh, it's, a very good bit, it's a very good bit of business from Groningen, and it's a great to see Robin back playing football. Um, that'll probably be my goal for next year is to go over to Holland and and see him um big big love of him of course being a Chelsea fan and uh, still felt that he could have done more for us but again the money is the money and that's what you've got to consider and uh, didn't exactly go on to do uh, too badly did he after leaving us so uh, it'd be very very excited to see that one so uh, make sure you check out the vlog for that one when it comes out and the last little bit of football that we've got is, of course, the MLS is coming back very, very soon. Uh, you actually think about it, it's a bit nuts. The pump is reopening on the, on the 4th of July, seeing like it was an absolute eternity away. And now it's Saturday. Well, the MLS returns on the 8th of July, which is four days on from Saturday. I, my maths is, oh my God, Wednesday? Is it Wednesday? Something like that. And of course, they're doing this new style tournament and everything that, or, that they're on about, which is great. But I've just read here as well, something that does have to be considered, unfortunately. 26 positive tests of coronavirus ahead of the MLS return uh, just going to read it off here very unprofessional but this is what I'm going to do make sure I get it right for you Major League Soccer says there have been 20 players and 6 staff that have tested positive for COVID-19 ahead of the MLS's back tournament if you don't know what that is I may do a separate video on it on my other channel Craigo 28 Football because um, I will be doing stuff for the MLS um, but pretty much they're doing a big tournament to get the MLS, uh, MLS back up and running uh, a total of 668 players have been tested since the resumption of 14 training on the 4th of June with 18 testing positive ahead of travelling to Disney World, uh, which is, of course, where the tournament is taking place. The MLS in a statement on Sunday said that two more players had tested positive for the coronavirus on their arrival in Orlando for the tournament, which will be held without fans and crown a winner on the 11th of August. Uh, which is great, and I, I love to see football back. Disney is where a lot of stuff's happening, and we're going to come onto it with the NBA in a little bit, uh, in a little while anyway. But in terms of, obviously, COVID-19 testing and everything like that. These players now have surely going to have to go into isolation. Now, depending on who they are, and it could come out very soon about who they are, if it's the likes of, I mean, the biggest star I can think of off the top of my head, Carlos Vela, that's a completely different team. Now, of course, in the MLS, what usually happens is you've got you've got quite a good team, and then you have two big stars or maybe three big stars. If it's one of those stars that you've got, complete game changer. For example, uh, Pizarro for into Miami, maybe uh, centre midfielder looks like all the creativity is going to come from him. If he's out, they've got no chance. They've got absolutely no chance. Um, so there's all all of these things are going to happen. I know in Miami aren't necessarily the best team that has ever been out there and whatever. Um, but for some of these teams, in terms of the bigger picture, if you've playing, if you're playing against LA, for example, if you are this kind of 
not a minnow side, but a smaller side. You've got one big player. You can give someone a game. If your best player pulls out because of the coronavirus and he has to, he hasn't got a choice, all of a sudden, just like that, you're out of the game. You're getting whacked 5-0 in the tournament, which, of course, then puts the tournament out for you because, let's be real, if you, if you lose 5-0 in the tournament, you're not good enough to be there pretty much. You won't last long, which is, of course, a massive shame, but there we are. That's what that's what the world's currently at. Um, but, yeah, no, the MLS returning is going to be fantastic. It's just a case of how they're going to deal with it because there's a lot of players in a very small space. I know America's got a hell of a lot of space, but it's still a very small space. The ground that they're using is actually quite nice, to be fair. Something I thought it would be... Uh, I thought it would just be rubbish, to be completely honest with you, but it's actually quite a nice ground. Um, and, and everything that they've kind of got there, all the facilities and everything, also as well, you've got to think about officials and club staff. There is going to be a lot of people down in uh, Orlando at the Disney Resort. And look, if you can make it work, you can make it work. But uh, Disney, I know, has been struggling a fair bit. A friend of mine was actually meant to go out to Disney this summer. Um, so... So he's obviously having a bit of a nightmare trying to get money back and whatever with everything, which is completely irrelevant to you lot. But in terms of a sporting context, if that's what's going on with the general public, it could also, there also could be problems going on with the um, with the global sports that are going on there. Of course, football uh, or soccer and uh, basketball, which is we're going to come on to next. It's, it's a very interesting thing that we could be doing in terms of, uh, or how it could be looking, sorry, I should say, how it should be looking across multiple months to come in terms of the coronavirus. Everyone keep saying oh when are fans going to come back when's this going to happen when's that going to happen New Zealand absolutely smashed it they had fans in and it all worked perfectly well it was it was fantastic it was great but the problem that you've then got in terms of uh, how we've dealt with the virus and how the majority of Europe has dealt with the virus New Zealand is an island so all of a sudden they can go no we don't want anyone coming in and it's really easy and really simple but in terms of places like Germany and Poland and uh, even France and places like Germany's dealt with the virus quite well but again you still don't know who's coming in all the time because you can very simply drive from one bo- one country to the next country if you I know multiple people that do it in France and Germany uh, someone that lives in the south of Germany drives to France to go and get food and then comes back you know, it, it, it's just easier, it's better food, whatever. That's your preference. That's cool. That's fine. Um, but again, it's that freedom to drive between whichever one you want is going to make things slightly more complicated for you. So uh, in terms of fans being back in grounds and everything, which is obviously going to happen at some point, it could be a little while yet. And the MLS, if this is this is the case, obviously Florida's had a really weird outbreak again. Um, so they could be in trouble. But main thing for me is in terms of wanting fans back in and getting people around sport, which is what you need to do first. Forget about having fans in seats, but you need people being around. That That's what you need. Are box owners going to be allowed back in? Because they're not technically fans, they're business people. You know, Are they going to be allowed in to see games? What's going to be the case with this? What's going to be the case with that? What's going to be uh, media stuff? If you can get full media teams there, I know they've been doing well in the Premier League and all sports, to be fair, have been doing very, very well it's still going to take a while for it to get back to normality. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with that. But for now, it looks like it's all kind of on the down low. Anyway, that's the end of football. Let's get straight on to a bit of the NBA. Now, obviously, as I've just said with the restart and everything, it is going to be complicated for the NBA. Um, And if this is the thing for me, although I get that there's very small teams, this is like the one sport where you would not want people playing because it's all inside, it's high energy, it's backwards and forwards. But most importantly, it's every player touches the ball with their hands. With football, you disinfect the ball and whatever, and you just move it on. Where basketball is played with your hands. With football, you pass the ball around. You may actually never touch the ball with your hands as a player. The idea is not. Otherwise, you give away a hand ball. The only way you're going to touch it is if you're a goalkeeper, you're wearing gloves, or you're taking a throw-in, which means you've just got a brand new disinfected ball, and it's completely fine anyway. But in the NBA, are you going to have people dotted all around the pitch, or all around the court, sorry, I should say, with disinfected balls? Are all the players going to have to wash their hands every quarter or whatever? What is going to happen? It could be absolutely nuts. But anyway, moving into this, and there's actually one particular story I want to talk about, uh, which is Rudy Gobert, uh, the first player that was uh, obviously in the NBA that got uh, contracted, publicly contracted uh, coronavirus, which is, of course, never good. He has come out and said that he is still struggling with the effects of COVID-19 after three three months three months of having the virus uh it, it it's actually slightly alarming again i'm just going to read this but i want to make sure i get it one million percent right for you utah jazz center rudy gobert the first nba rep- uh, player reported to test positive for the covid19 virus 
blah, 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 blah. The suspension of the league has said he's not fully recovered for more than three months after his original diagnosis. Speaking to Letter Keep in France, I always manage to say that wrong. The two-time Defensive Player of the Year and All-Star um, said his condition, in well, in regards to his condition, the taste has returned, but the smell is still not 100%. I can smell the smells, but not from a spa, uh, not from afar. I spoke to a specialist who told me it could take up to a year. Um, now, in terms of how it's going to affect him in terms of playing, obviously smell and taste mean nothing towards basketball. But another thing I've heard massively is about tiredness, uh, which is something that needs to be considered. Again, playing in, they're going to have probably air conditioning and stuff like that. But of course, that's been a, a very bad thing to have when it comes to coronavirus. Um, it's going to be difficult for players to deal with. And again, they're all indoors. It's going to be high energy. And these guys, they're really competitive, superhuman athletes, pretty much a lot of these people in the NBA. Um, I was watching the last dance. You see some of the, even the smaller players, you know, the, the, the lesser known players are still incredible, incredible athletes. There is huge potential for this to go really, really right and be a really good tournament and well, be a really good uh, selection of games. But there's also massive, massive problems if you're thinking about getting it actually finished. Now they haven't. I know they've come out with a few schedules and stuff. I'll put a little screenshot in here if I can find one of the schedules and stuff like that. But most importantly for me is if you want to get this done, you have to get it done the right way because all that could happen. And I know Flora's going for like a little bit of like a second peak or a second wave or whatever you want to call it. But if you want to get it done, you need to get it done right. Now, I know there's a lot of games and they're already going to miss out on a lot of money. I get that. One million percent, I get that. But at the same time, I do think you need to consider the safety of the players, which I do think they are. But also the players maybe not be helping themselves in the same way. Um, I know LeBron has obviously been very public and very vocal. Uh, the Lakers look like it could have been their year to go and smash it up, and they look like they were going to go and do it. And then all of a sudden, this massive virus comes along, and he's particularly pissed off. But again, he wants to go. He's ready for it. Now, is that his competitive nature, which is great, of course, to have, but he's actually slightly immature at this moment in time. Actually, no, I'm not going to lie. Sorry, immature is the wrong word, but more... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? It will come to me eventually. More... Uh, irresponsible, maybe we should say. It's uh, it's a tough one to deal with, of course, because you know what you want to go and do as a player. You know you want to go and win the NBA. But is it really for the best of everyone involved? Because let's be honest, if they'd have turned around and said, right, this is the league table, this is what we've got, we're going to take all the teams that are in the playoffs. If you're not in the playoffs, tough, unfortunately. I don't think anyone really would have complained because there's a lot of dead games and now I'm a Wizards fan, we're gonna, we're already out of it. We can still technically make it, but we're not going to make it. We've got stupid runner games coming up. We're out, so what's the point of us going to go and play down in Florida? I get that maybe it gives the fans something to go and talk about and whatever, and it's good, and you need to finish the season in its entirety, but if you'd have just done the playoffs, I don't think anyone would have really had any massive quarrels, if you get what I mean. I know there was still a fair few games to go, but you would have been able to get there quite comfortably by just doing the playoffs. And I think there's one thing the NBA needs to consider, and I know that they've got it all kind of mapped out and whatever, but actually, is it the right thing to do to be playing so many games? And is there ever going to be a cutoff point? Because everyone's going to go, oh yeah, it's all fine. But if one player in a very small team gets coronavirus, realistically, everyone that's played for that team and played against him should really quarantine as well for the next 14 days, which throws the whole thing into disarray. Who knows what's going to happen with it? Either way, I know it's going to be very entertaining to watch when it does start back up. It's just a case of, is it going to work successfully? I don't know, but you'll be, you'll be able to find out here. I'll, be, I'll definitely be making videos for it. And now let's get into a bit of NFL news to round off this episode of the podcast. Now, the first bit we're going to talk about, both bits actually involve the Patriots. The first bit we're going to talk about is the classic Spygate. I love this. Patriots find $1.1 million for Spygate sequel, which is Fantastic. Uh, if anyone doesn't know this, I'll just read this for you. The New England Patriots have been fined $1.1 million by the NFL for inappropriately filming the Cincinnati Bengals sideline during the game last season. The Cincinnati Bengals were crap. If you wanted to pick any team to get possibly caught with Spygate, you would not pick the worst team in the league. It's absolutely ludicrous. But of course, it is the right thing of, of course to do. The league has also taken away a third round pick in the 2021 draft and has also stopped the Patriots staff from uh, filming games next year, which is very interesting. Not necessarily much the filming of the games, but the third round draft pick is uh, very, very interesting to say the least. And to come on to another topic I'm going to talk about in a moment, which of course we all know is going to be Cam Newton, the only thing I haven't yet covered. It's a very interesting thing because, of course, Cam Newton's obviously just signed. We'll go on to that in a minute. But there was obviously the big talks. Obviously, Brady's left, which is 
No, never good. I'm I'm a Dolphins fan, obviously. It's never good for the uh, AFC East when your best player leaves or the best player leaves. But again, it also now means there's more opportunities coming up. Fantastic. But to be fined a third round draft pick, the Patriots are very good at picking up picks and, you know, trading back, making sure they get the player that they want and whatever, but without giving up too much. All they do is accumulate draft picks, accumulate draft picks, accumulate draft picks, and every single year manage to put these draft picks together to move up to a petition that they want. Now, this year, there was no one in particular that they wanted, so they managed to trade back and get a fair few draft picks. But now for next year's draft, they've got a hell of a lot of draft picks, and all they need to do is piece one together with this, piece one together with that, piece one together with this, piece one together with that that do they think they were going to be able to get trevor lawrence that was the one that everyone thought they were going to go and get it now looks like they're not going to go and get trevor lawrence because they're not going to have the weight to trade up for him now i was all thinking are the patriots going to go and just completely stack it or are they going to try and go a bit bigger are they going to try and have that momentum i think the thing that's very interesting is Bill Belichick clearly does not want to be one of those rebuilding franchises. He doesn't want to suck and then all of a sudden manage to go all the way up to maybe the number two pick and you trade up from number two to number one. Either way, they get to the number one pick and take Trevor Lawrence. That's what I. That's not what he wanted. He wanted to be able to trade up from a reasonable pick. Now, they're not going to be the same team without Tom Brady. That's impossible. And they've lost a fair few other players as well. They're never going to be the same team without Tom Brady, but... I thought they would be maybe a middle of the road-ish. If you could tick, pick up maybe the ninth overall pick or something like that. That neck of the woods. Maybe top 10. Maybe just uh, maybe just around the 10 mark. If you could have picked up that pick, which would have been great for the Patriots, you'd have been able to trade up. And there would have been genuine possibilities, even if you had to give up next year's first round pick, to go and get Trevor Lawrence. But now, of course, they haven't. They've signed Cam Newton, which I'm going to get onto in a minute. It now looks like it's almost a statement of intent. And this... Uh, 1.1 million pound fine or dollar fine I should say sorry is impacting them more than most people actually think they've had to change the way they're looking at things they've had to change different options and it also now perfectly leads on to Cam Newton now let's talk about Cam Newton because obviously I've said I'm going to do it let me get my phone out ready so I get it 1 million percent right for you Cam Newton will challenge 2019 fourth round pick Jared Stidham and Brian Hoyer for the starting role vacated by three-time MVP Tom Brady free agent quarterback back cam newton has agreed a one-year contract with the new england patriots the 2015 mvp will join the six-time super bowl champions in a deal worth 7.5 million dollars this is a great move and as a dolphins fan i'm particularly annoyed by it i am very happy we've got to her but to have a player of cam's quality and he was available should have been looked at by the Dolphins. Now, I don't think we would have taken him. I do still think Tua is the guy, but a player of that quality and that experience doesn't come around very often. Now, of course, they said this has been a new and this is breaking and whatever. Apparently, this has been in the works for quite a while. Uh, now, how much of that you want to believe? I don't know. That's down to you, personal perceptions. For me, I believe it 1 million percent. In terms of the Patriots, they wanted him. They haven't got a lot of cap space. That was the thing they had to deal with. Are we going to have cap space? Are we going to need to sign people throughout the year? Or are we going to be able to go for a QB? Because let's be honest, Hoyer is crap. Stidham is massively unproven. You don't know what you're going to get with him. I saw him play about three or four snaps, I think, last year uh, whilst I was in Miami um, because Brady wasn't needed pretty much. Do I think that he's going to be that much of a success in New England? Um, sorry, Stitham or Hoyer? No, neither of them do. Do I think Cam's going to be a success? Yes, but what is success for Cam Newton? Cam Newton is a 31-year-old who should really have got a contract but didn't. He's now taken a team-friendly deal with the Patriots, 7.5 million for a year, and I know there's a lot of people that are annoyed by it. Richard Sherman, I saw, is not happy about it because he only got 7.5 million. Uh, and let's be honest, he is worth a lot more than that, Cam, but he has to be able to prove himself. And where better to prove yourself than one of the best NFL franchises of all time, especially in the last 20 years, especially in the last 20 years. They have been so successful, they've got probably the best coach of all time. That's coming from me, a Dolphins fan, obviously with Don Shula being on our, uh, our camp and our candidate. He has still got a lot to prove, which is great, but he can do it in the right offense. And Bill Pelichek, I think, is going to come up with a lot of decent coaching strategies to cater for him. Now, what happens? Worst case scenario is they're crap, and he doesn't fit in at all. And it's really annoying for Cam Newton, but people still see that he can still throw the ball about a bit. And then he goes to another club, or another threat franchise, I should say, sorry, and then tries to rebuild his career from there. Because he's still only 31, so let's say a year's time he's 32. Let's say the same thing happens again. He doesn't quite work out, and he goes elsewhere. Worst case scenario... 
Patriots suck again, don't they? So they end up with their decent draft pick, and you could possibly go and get Trevor Lawrence. It is possible. Either way, Cam Newton is still there, and he's shown that what he can do. He's shown that he's still not that rusty. Of course, he had a bad year when he was caught out injured, and the Carolina Panthers' uh, journey ended terribly for him, and I was not happy about that at all. But at the same time, he's managed to show people what he can do, and then all of a sudden, a new team comes along. And they go, oh, yeah, we'll give, we'll give Cam a go. We'll give Cam a go because there's bound to be someone that retires. There's bound to be someone that retires or moves on or he's had enough, he gets a bad injury. So Cam comes in. Fair enough. Bit more of a normal year as well. This year's going to be very strange. You don't know if fans are going to be allowed back in or whatever. I don't think they're going to be allowed until the new year, which pretty much takes it all, all, the, uh, all the NFL season out of the way. But Cam does all right. He manages to play a few games, throws a couple of touchdown passes. People see, oh, my God, he's still got it. Okay, we'll have a look at him in years to come. Great bit of business. Fair play. What is more likely to happen is Bill Belichick is going to get this really good offense that he's really, really happy with. Cam's going to be at the heart of it. They're going to offer him a one-year deal, which they already have and he's already agreed to. He plays for a year. Does really, really well, which I do think he will. And I think a lot of Bills, Jets, and especially my Dolphins, are really looking forward to getting two wins out of two against the Patriots, which is not going to happen um, at all. Either way, Cam goes and plays really well. He goes and shows people that maybe he is the best quarterback in the AFC East at the current moment in time because you don't know what's going to go on with the other three or other four, whatever you want to consider, if Ryan Fitzpatrick or whatever. Then it allows Cam to go, look, I want to go and I want to get more money. I want to go and get what I deserve. And I think everyone around the league would look at the patrons and go, yeah, we can't pay you that because we've got Trevor Lawrence here. We're going to go and get our QB of the future or, or whatever you want to go and do. Again, if it works out for him and he demands more money, which you think is likely to happen. The Patriots are either going to have to be able to move some stuff around, which they will be able to, um, because there's a bit less dead money at the franchise at that point next year, or they're going to have to move on in the right way, which is go, yeah, unfortunately, we can't pay you that. We've got to move on with a younger QB, which definitely could happen, which means Cam goes off. He rides off into the sunset. Thank you very much for playing under one of the best coaches of all time. I want to go and play. And you've got probably three, four, five years worth of Cam playing football at the best of his ability. And someone will definitely take that. Someone will give him a three-year contract or a four-year contract because they need a QB. I know Nick Foles went for a lot of money, stupid amounts of money. And let's be honest, I don't think he's going to be the same player that Cam is, pretty much. I, I Cam's got a point to prove. He's he's aggressive. He's ready to go. He has got a massive point to prove. And of, of course, the way that ended Carolina, it, the whole season, the whole way everything structured for Cam just went wrong. He's got a massive point to prove. He's angry. He's aggravated. And he wants to go. He's raring and ready to go. He is full of energy. And it looks like it's going to be a very good campaign for him. You then look at the flip side of that and look like Foles, who played, obviously... He's a Super Bowl champion. He's a Super Bowl champion. Uh, He's probably the best player in that Super Bowl, actually, to be fair to him. Either way, Super Bowl champion, went to Jacksonville, didn't work out. Fair enough, it happens. He's then gone, obviously, up to the Chicago Bears. He's got then a QB battle with Mitch Trubisky, who I think I do think Mitch Trubisky is going to lose out on. Nick Foles goes and plays. Does he go and play for a decent franchise, or does he go and just get a starting job as a QB? He's already won a Super Bowl. His career is... On the decline, if that makes sense. You look at Michael Jordan, especially in the last dance. He won the first one. That was the, he wanted to go and win more. With Cam, he didn't necessarily play as well as he could do in years to come. He still has that point to prove. And to get a guy that's not now $7.5 million, uh, $7. million on the cap hit, which is completely fine, and most people as a backup would get something along those lines, he's essentially taking backup money to go and be an NFL, a potential NFL star. For one year of taking 7.5 million to then possibly for the next five years go and get who knows how much money, it's definitely worth doing. It's 1 million percent worth doing. And Cam, I think from my point of view, it's a fantastic, a fantastic bit of business. Now, I wish you all the worst when you're playing for the Patriots, but in terms of after that, if you do move on, hey, mate, go for it. <laughs> Absolutely go for it. Because you're clearly a talented player. Go and move on. Go and experience the league. Go and show people, all the people that have slept on you for all these years, go and show them. The Chargers slept on you. They said they didn't want to take Tyrod Taylor. Now, I know they like him, and of course, they've now got, uh, gone and got Justin Herbert. But at the same time, go and prove to them, this is what you could have had. This is what you should have had, probably. That, for me, is a massive incentive that I think someone like Cam and the personality that he's got is going to shine to compared to, uh, compared to someone like Nick Foles, who 
is good and still probably has something to prove, but maybe doesn't have the same get up and go as Cam Newton does. All I know is as a Dolphins fan, I am absolutely pooing my pants. So uh, this will be fun for the next year. I thought this was going to be our year and we go and progress and we go and show everyone that we could be the second best team in the AFC East and all of a sudden become the first. Now we'd be lucky to get third, I reckon. But either way, it's... Uh, it's a great bit of business from the Patriots and of course with everything that's gone on with them with the old Spygate scandal getting done against the Cincinnati Bengals of all teams it's absolutely ludicrous to get done like that it's just absolutely nuts but to sign Cam for a one year deal 7.5 million dollars absolutely insane business anyway that's going to be it from me from the podcast today hopefully you guys have enjoyed listening to this watching this however you're doing it uh, if you like me doing this but just by myself then please do let me know if you want me to do it with guests again please do let me know all your suggestions all your thoughts all your topics i'm very heavily active on my instagram make sure you go and follow that which is craigo.28 and also on my twitter the craigo28 uh, make sure you go and follow both of those and if you have any topics you want me to talk about then please do put, send me a tweet send me a message whatever it is just give me suggestions anyway that is going to be it from me take care stay safe hopefully you enjoyed the podcast and i'll see you back here next week for loads more content take care stay safe